Greetings, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, part of uh, Transforming Data into Digital Assets, are presented by PIMSoft. Today, you will learn, uh, you know, the basics of Sigma Fine reconciliation. I'm going to introduce the topic of how uh, Sigma Fine uh, monitors uh, and uh, contributes to improving the data quality through time. And lastly, I want to show you a few of the benefits that our customers in the metals and mining have disclosed. Our mission. So we are in the business of generating value for customers by ensuring the accuracy, reliability, and usability of their process and manufacturing data at all times and across the enterprise. So in a nutshell, what we're doing is we're taking your data, we are uh, transforming it uh, into an asset-based uh, data set. We are removing the inconsistencies that do not align with the conservation of mass and energy. And we're making this available to be consumed by persons and by systems. So if you don't know Sigma Fine or, or PIMSoft, let me just give you a brief overview. So Sigma Fine is our product. It was first launched in 1993 by KBC. It was then acquired by OSI Soft in 1999. In 1999 was the era when the asset framework technology was uh, designed by OSI Soft. And Sigma Fine was one of the first products to be built on AF technology. In 2010, PIMSoft, a top tier partner of OSI Soft, bought Sigma Fine. Uh, however, prior to purchasing Sigma Fine, PIMSoft was and still is a system integrator of uh, several of OSI Soft solutions. And as you can see from the slide, PIMSoft itself started uh, in 1995, and we, we continue to grow and expand in, in time and space. No one really comes to, to PIMSoft and say, I want to do a mass and component balance. Instead, it is often to meet a business need. And here I have summarized the top four business requirements that can be met with Sigma Phi and mass and component balance. So license to operate often includes the requirement also extends to accurate financial data uh, record keeping. It's not often a choice, but a necessity. Not only do you need to do the balance, the mass and component balance, that is, it often should be auditable, must be structured, and it should follow local and international rules. This is a given for Sigma Fine. Uh, toll contracts. You might be engaged in processing materials of your upstream or downstream business partners, or your facility might have shared resources such as steam, natural gas, etc. And balancing distributes the cost fairly in both situations. So in both cases, your internal process data becomes the source data for your financial transactions. And when money is involved, the accuracy of this data set becomes even more important. Now let's talk about loss monitoring. It's never the intention to to lose or raw materials or inventory or products. But when these ad hoc events occur, the estimation and validation can be difficult. And as this affects or our liability of the event, this translates to real costs. But also in the day-to-day -day normal plant activities, apparent losses takes place here and there because of your of measurement inaccuracies. And these also get classified as losses. It is easy to see that if you can reduce your apparent losses through data reconciliation, then this activity could improve your declared production of your facility. Resolving the data set for real and apparent losses becomes really doable uh, with Sigma Fine. And let's look to the future. Performance monitoring, carbon trading, future business needs. If we look to the future, we see that improved process data quality will will the need for improved uh, process data quality will be increased. If, for example, if you're engaged in, in carbon trading scheme at a local or international level, the requirements are not only that the data set be balanced, but also you need to ensure the quality of this data set exceeds a certain standard associated with this carbon trading. The context of uh, carbon trading is now an asset-based, let's say, framework. And for this, uh, this scenario, Sigma Fine, in Sigma Fine, this means small models running unattended for balanced periods about 10 minutes. 
for this, if this is of interest, uh, please just go to our website and look at the APLON presentation. If you're interested in circular economy, where uh, you may need to relate your final products in terms of the circular, let's say, effect of the source material, including your raw materials, uh, Sigma Fine is able to do this. How? Because Sigma Fine not only has uh, balancing algorithms, but it also has tracking and tracing uh, both uh, physical and business properties of material received and used in your facilities. And so Sigma Fine can be configured to track uh, the data needed to be reported in a circular economy. So in summary, Sigma Fine as an infrastructure based solution can be configured to resolve multiple uh, business needs. So let's do more with Sigma Fine. Uh, this is taken from Emerson, uh, one of our key business partners. And while this slide gives uh, the order uh, of magnitude of a site-wide imbalance for an oil and gas refinery, we can see that from this data set, the, your, in a typical refinery, the imbalance is about 2%. And the aim is to uh, get your imbalance in your, in your measurements down to 0.2. I'm pretty sure that this translates to millions of dollars lost due to poor data quality. And the problem should be addressed through improved instrumentation and through mass balancing solutions. If we were to extend this data set to other industries, such as metals and mining, uh, the starting point might be 5% and probably we want to get to a 1% imbalance in our data set. While if we look at power generation, the, the original data set is probably at 1%. And of course, the aim is always 0.2%. So while the, de the delta may differ for each industry, for all industries that we've worked with, the business case has always been transparent that data reconciliation brings value. Here, uh, this is from one of our key customers, Sasol, uh, who uses Sigma Fine for the daily production. Uh, this slide gives the business value of the uncertainty in their data set. For example, a 1% uncertainty in a high value product example propylene in a large refinery, Sassol in South Africa, translate to a, a potential cost of 60 million monthly. What they're saying is that if you can't name it, you can't claim it. So if you can't state that you've made more, you can't bill it. So if they don't balance the data and if they rely fully on their raw data, this uncertainty and this inaccuracy translates to millions of dollars per month per product. So data reconciliation gives you the confidence to trust your process data and to focus on problematic measurements. I urge you to think about the value to your business of 1% uncertainty in a product, whether it be gold, silver, iron, or silica. So let's, uh, let's go to the Sigma Fine basics. Sigma Fine is an application, okay? It comes with many plugins. It's not just for mass component balance. It, we can do tracking, as I mentioned before, mass, energy, volume, and all is included in our server. Today, we're gonna focus on the component balance analysis. This analysis is used to solve at the same time the balance on a whole quantity around each balance point, example, process unit tank, uh, nodes, etc., as well as the named components. So that is the component that you are interested in. This means that the analysis provides you a consistent data set of both reconciled mass and reconciled components for all your measurements, your movements, and your inventories represented in your model. We see that we have a component balance flag. This means that you can activate the components balance flag in areas of your model where you have analyzers. In areas where you don't have analyzers, only the mass balance will be run. Sigma Fine model analysis are saved in the Pi Asset framework. You have the possibility to read process data from Pi or other historians and write back to Pi or to other historians. Uh, finally, you can also say how often you want to do it, the periodicity, hourly, daily, etc. It's an open framework which can be configured to meet your scope. What we are really doing, we are minimizing the errors associated uh, with your meters as well as your analyzers. Sigma Fine not only uh, uh, solves the balance on the mass and the component, it also gives you a quality of your model about the solvability. And this is quite important because in areas, in, in a moment in time, some areas of your model can become 
uh, not solvable or non-redundant due to measurement failure. Uh, and with this uh, algorithm, we are able to turn uh, those areas off and we're also and run the balance for the rest of the system of measurements that are solvable and give you an alarm. Here we have a sigma fan model representing a flotation plant. The model is made up of elements such as meters, analyzers, unmeasured flows, uh, an unmeasured flow, for example, is something that has no measurement. So, for example, here we have all these uh, four streams, they get merged, and here it's unmeasured. So we have, a measure, we have measurements, we have meters, we have analyzers, we have tanks, we have nodes. So these are our assets, for example. So let's look at this cleaner, this flow, flash float cleaner. So let's start with the measured data. Okay, it has uh, one input and two outputs, as I showed you. If we execute the material balance around this point, we see that there's an imbalance of, here you can see the total mass going in, the total mass going out. And we have an imbalance of 0.9 tons. At the same time, if we consider the component, the copper, we have an imbalance of 16 tons. If we then run the sigma fine uh, mass and component balance, we see that we're able to resolve the imbalance both on the total mass as well as on the on the copper. Let's look at monitoring or data quality. Okay, so here we see we have five flows, three going in and two going out, and we see that we have an imbalance of ten. However, we also have an uh, we have an uncertainty of five point nine percent on the on this simple system. Okay. If we look on the reconciled data set, we see uh, that the uncertainty has been reduced to 4.3%, and we also see that the imbalance has been eliminated. If we were to look at, let's say, uh, flow two, it had an uncertainty of four on 80, so it had an uncertainty of 5%. And our uncertainty has been reduced to 2.2 on 73. That's you know that's 40% reduction in uncertainty in in a measurement without changing the technology of the instrument. So this is the power of data reconciliation. So not only does it give you a an improved, uh, it not does it not only does it eliminate or reduce the imbalance, but it really improves the quality of your measurements. Um, but of course, we see that that system was if we go back we see that this system was redundant. All the flows were measured, everything was measured, and we know <laughs> this is kind of ideal. So uh, do we have all, do we always have meters everywhere? Probably not. So how do we get a highly redundant model in a, a real situation uh, without blowing the budget on instrumentation? So Sigma Fine data set is not just your measurements. We can, uh, combine multiple data sources. So we can include financial transactions. We include your scheduling, your engineering equations. All of this data set can be incorporated into Sigma Fine to improve uh, the robustness of the model, the redundancy. And as soon as the redundancy increases, so we can improve the data quality. We can include your temperature and pressure data, your operating conditions, design data, engineering estimates, all can be incorporate into the model to improve its robustness and redundancy. This is an example of Podelco. All this, this full presentation, you can visit our website. I'll give you an overview later. And again, you can see similar assets. You can see inputs, you can see analyzers, flows, balance point, inventories. And so in any industry, our assets uh, are pretty much the same. Emerson gave some guidelines or current status of the typical imbalance that exists in oil refineries. Here, most shows that they are using Sigma Fine to monitor and to, and to improve the process data quality. The average imbalance is 2%, 2.5%, and for the current period, it's less than 1%. So this indicates an improvement in, in the raw data set in time. So they move from 2.5 to 1. Uh, however, it, it shows that this small site is uh, a, tip, a data set typical to most refineries. SigmaFine is also used to measure the redundancy of the case and to give some guidelines on to, under which SigmaFine works best. The percentage of unmeasured flow should be less than 
and your total imbalance should be less than 10%. Simply said, if you ask him a fine to do a balance in a situation where the or measured flow is high or the total imbalance is high, the outputs are not trustable. So Mo is using sigma fine uh, in a situation where sigma fine can work as the unmeasured flow is less than 2.5% and the imbalance is less than 1%. What we can say is that when you start to monitor your data quality, you can see an improvement. So when you take action on measurements that influence your imbalance, here you can see that they're going in the right direction. Uh, in maintaining the instruments that matter. Now I want to go through some customer use case. The first one is, uh, is Codelco. Uh, they use Sigma Fine in their metals accounting solution. If you want the full presentation, just go to our website. They're freely available. Codelco uh, is in a process of implementing and consolidating a metallurgical solution at the corporate level. Uh, it has seven uh, mining sites, as well as a smelter and refinery. Their mission is to consolidate at a corporate level, and they want an integrated solution, standardized throughout their organization. Uh, to support this mission, they selected the, the best in the marketplace, which is uh, they chose Sigma Fine, OSI Soft, and our local partner called Contact. And their aim was to optimize uh, their operational data they want to control losses, and I spoke to you about apparent and real losses before. And they're also challenging the team to do things that they haven't thought about for continuous improvement. So if we take a look at uh, their metallurgical uh, balance, you can see that it considers, let's look at the inputs. So the inputs is not just your measurements, okay? So here are your online measurements. They have some weighing that's probably in a different system. They have an inventory system, they have lab systems. They also include the materials that they buy and the materials that they sell. And of course, the data set that is inside the process. So this inc increases the redundancy of a Sigma Fine model when you connect all the data set that can contribute uh, to closing a mass and component balance. Uh, the, of course, in, in Sigma Fine, you can adjust the mass as well as the, and, and the analyzers. Everything is tracked. All the changes on your tolerance, all the changes on your analyzers, everything is, is tracked in the Sigma Fine. You can also pre-validate your data. We have gross data error detection. And the reason they are doing a reconciliation is that they you see product valorization simply meaning they need to translate their tonnage into money. Uh, and this is uh, the basis on which they sell okay, the provisional data for sales. So here you're turning your all of this data set into what you sell, what you can build. You can claim it if you can name it. And so this is why it's important. So in summary, the metallurgical balance needs is, is comprehensive. It has to be reliable, traceable, and auditable. It has to contain all the information from the source to the transformation that has taken place. It needs to be standard and automatic. And so this is what Sigma Fine is doing at Codelco. To give an idea what it looks like to do uh, at a corporate level, you can see they have a Sigma Fine uh, and Pi at the division level, they have it at the dis district level, and they have it at the corporate level. Most of these servers are virtual and they do have some, let's say, um, some backup, some physical servers for backup. Apart from uh, getting the right uh, number on, on your selling and, and buying and selling of products, they're also monitoring the data quality. They're monitoring it both on the mass as well as on the components. And here you can see we have an imbalance on a mass which was uh, corrected outside of its tolerance. They want to stay within 2%. It was corrected to minus two and it was corrected at minus 3.5. However, this is on the total uh, mass. And if you look at the composition, you can see that the adjustments on the measured components, the water, copper, molybdenum, et cetera, were all, so this is a, a low risk, but it's something they should investigate in the future on this mass flow meter rather than the analyzers. If it's that they attribute to Sigma Fine, having an automatic uh, data reconciliation process is in itself is uh, considered uh, a benefit. The adjustments are recorded and the accuracy of the data set is being monitored. 
They now have standardized models for all the sites, standardized, reliable, and traceable. And putting all this together, this translates into a process benefit uh, so that they can react and address issues in a timely and standardized manner. In the future, Codelco wants to put appropriate uh, limits on the adjustments possible to be made on the data set, and the limits uh, should be based on technical coherence. ArcelorMittal, uh, they are in Canada. This is an iron ore facility. Uh, they own and operate the full uh, value chain of from iron ore mining through to beneficiating and pelletizing. And they also have the rails and the ships to bring this, uh, iron, these iron, the iron ore pellets to, to worldwide customers. Now everybody in the metals and mining world do the mass and component balance. There are no exception. So prior to Sigma Fine, they were doing the balance. However, it was done in Excel. It was done once a week as it was very time consuming. It consisted of over 15 Excel spreadsheets with custom macros. Uh, this means that the actual production was not known for a week, a big issue for an enterprise as big as ArcelorMittal. Uh, the engineer, Emily, with whom I did this presentation at the OSI Soft Virtual Summit, uh, also wanted a better solution. They had another big issue, okay, bulk material. Bulk means a big uncertainty. They have only one weight cell at the entry of the plant. They have no weight cell on the output. And the inventory uh, was measured two times per year. So with this uh, low level of instrument on the, input, the main input and output on the output, uh, a mass and component balance uh, will increase, increase the robustness of uh, a model. The digital transformation at the pelletizing plant consisted of storing the data. They stored the data in SQL and Py archive. This data was then used to build asset-based models, Sigma Fine, and other AF-based models on, let's say, equipment utilization. And once the data is structured, it was then needs to be visualized for consumption, and they're using both uh, Power BI and PyVision, and they have uh, more than 30 other client tools. Here you can see just a vision of what the Sigma Fine component balance looks like in the AF environment. Here you can see the components that are being monitored are iron ore, silica, and magnesium. Uh, they have over, uh, the model consists of about 500 elements, a mixture of analyzers, uh, flows, uh, tanks, uh, and nodes. However, in the AF you see uh, only one balance point at a time. So let's see how do they really work with Sigma Fine. So the team uh, created a, the mass and component balance, the flow sheet. Uh, this uh, was, it was used to build the model. You can see we have, again, just one node uh, with one flow with uh, an input and an output, which has the measured mass and analyzer on the input and the output on this node. And then what they did, they created an AutoCAD drawing push that drawing to PyVision and on the PyVision they you can see the color coding which is based on let's say the object status if it is running or not. At the bottom of the shape page you can see the production. So when you click on the production you can then launch the PyVision Py Power BI dashboard. The Pi RBI dashboard shows more than just the production, the daily production. The daily production is the key number at the top, the 26,000 tons. It then gives you the production per unit, and it gives you the assets that feed these furnace, and if you click down, further down, etc. So it is a value tree. Uh, the colors change based on the deviation, so if you're more than 5% deviation from target, you get a red. So they know that they're below production, and they know both furnaces are having problems and they know which asset uh, is limiting the furnace. When you click on any of these big assets, you can see the contributors in time, you can see the adjustments, uh, the corrections made uh, on the data set. So it's a very in interactive uh, Power BI dashboard. This schema can be sent so that it can be cons consumed. It's a snapshot and can be shared via link. This is a, a dashboard that they use daily. 
so it's turned uh, Sigma Fine and, and this is the AF to, into very consumable uh, data. You're not seeing an engineering, uh, let's say, flow sheet, but you are seeing data that you can trust, you can uh, you can diagnose, you can evaluate, you can query. Uh, the technology behind this, just to give you a snapshot, uh, to create a page like this, the data aggregation uh, in uh, Power BI has a basis of the Py SQL Commander to extract the data set, the cases and the Pi OLED to, uh, to extract the data stored in the Pi archive. Again, if you'd like the full presentation, you can visit uh, OSI Soft or, or website. Um, they did a lot of things. You know, they moved from weekly to daily. They moved from Excel spreadsheet to infrastructure-based solution by Sigma Fine, uh, Microsoft, and many other client tools. Now they have a, they give a benefit of a 30% uh, reduction in, in the time taken to do a daily balance if they were to do it without this infrastructure. Now they are identifying uh, quickly, systematically uh, measurements and sensors that are untrust, not trustable. And when and now that they have uh, production data available for every day for everyone, uh, their reaction time has uh, vastly improved and you can imagine how much money you can save when you can do things quicker. Thanks for listening. I, I hope I gave you uh, the importance of having a robust uh, model and we're not saying go and buy a thousand instruments. We're saying use all the data available, measured, simulated engineering estimates. And we're saying uh, let's do the mass and component balance and let's give you the mass balance and components as well. But let's also monitor the data quality because the aim is to always improve. It's a continuous improvement path. And we're saying um, when you look to the future, if you are going to do or go towards carbon trading or circular economy, or if you're having shared assets, uh, let's uh, discuss the Sigma Fine's capability to track uh, business and chemical properties of, of your facility and your materials. Let's not forget uh, the utility side, so we can also do the energy balance. So I hope I opened your eyes to see that Sigma Fine can do more uh, than just do your mass and component balance. I remain available for any questions. Thank you for listening.